I'm back and I have decided to tell my paranormal story about the haunted hospital I was born in. Um, I was probably about three or four years old when this occurred and uh, I have a very very vivid memory of my childhood it's like um, super exact okay some people have this I don't know I have it okay the hospital I was born in in Houston Texas the name of it was Jefferson Davis Hospital and it's actually in this book called Texas Ghosts, Galveston, Houston, and Vicinity. Um, <laughs> and it's written by Olive Hallmark Abbott. So it says right here, it used to be called the City Cemetery. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting, I'm gonna have some of this. Mm -hmm. to reset my mouth <laughs> okay so Jefferson Davis Hospital was built on top of a cemetery named City Cemetery this cemetery was segregated in sections including Masons, Odd Fellows, Suicides, Gunfighters and General Undesirables victims of the 1867 yellow fever epidemic shared a mass grave. A large percentage of the corpse, uh, a large percentage, uh, a large percentage of the corpses were soldiers, mostly Confederates, but many of the Union Army as well. Okay, blah 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 blah. They were buried there, and there is in between 5,000 and 10,000 graves, okay? Um, in 1924, they began building the Jefferson Davis Hospital and they were digging up people and just throwing the bones out. So they were like desecrating these graves. Um, they were putting bones in in crates and just taking them away. There was no records. Um, the Odd Fellows never used their section, so that wasn't, you know, an issue for them. The Masons immediately exhumed their dead. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so. Anyway, so they built over this um, cemetery and they also built a fire department you know next to it as well which is also over it so anyway let me give you my story so that's just the background of this hospital okay it was even reported on abc eyewitness news in 2003 that uh, some college kids decided to go in there because it, it used to be abandoned like it was abandoned later on and they said all sorts of crazy stuff would happen um, things popped up sounds a feeling someone was watching them blah 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 okay so it used to be abandoned and a lot of kids would go in there and mess around at night my friend my best friend Jenny she actually told me that she went in there and it was scary and she left they later converted the hospital into some loft apartments like trendy loft apartments and that's what it is today but when i was at that hospital i was born there um or on the same property because there was two hospitals built and it's on the same land so I was born in the Jefferson Davis Hospital and my brother who was one year younger than me he didn't he, back then we were Catholic and uh, my mom didn't have him circumcised when he was born so like she waited till he was like two years old or three years old 
and took him in to have him circumcised. <laughs> I know I'm putting all this business out there. I'm sorry. But so I was going to the hospital where I was born because he was getting his surgery there. And I'm walking around the hospital holding my mom's and mom's hand and just looking around and I'm seeing patients, doctors, people just walking around. I'm like, you know, I'm about four, four years old. And I notice some things. I notice that there are patients walking around with injuries that have not been fixed. And I was not in the emergency room. I was just in the courtyard. I saw this guy and he was a tall African-American uh, male and he had a bandage wrapped around his head and there was a spot of blood on it. And I was on top of uh, my dad's shoulders and like, you know how dads ride their kids on their shoulders. I was on top of my dad's shoulders and I could see, you know, above his head the the tall african-american guy who was injured i could see above his head and it, he had uh his brain was showing like the top of his skull was removed and i could see his brains and there were insects and flies landing on it and it wasn't a sore it was a brain because it was like pulsating um and so i i didn't know anything about medical uh science or anything back then I just was a little kid and I was like oh mommy you see that guy's brains I didn't you know that's 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 nasty there a fly landed on it and <laughs> my mom was like what are you talking about I don't see anybody you know I don't see anybody's brains or I don't see anybody with flies on their heads and it's like in that movie the sixth sense when that little kid could see like the dead people walking around and their injuries were just fresh and bloody that's how i saw um people it, when i was walking around in the hospital and the hospital seemed extra crowded you know now that i think about how uh many people are walking down in hospital hallways there it was packed when i was a kid and it, it, it's not supposed to be like that those were like spirits that I was seeing those were the spirits of the people that were probably killed and buried in that cemetery and their 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 graves were desecrated I don't know I don't know I had no idea about the paranormal back then I was just a, a child seeing stuff that I shouldn't have been seeing and I think that is part of the reason why I became a mortician because You know, I was seeing, I didn't know they were dead. I thought they were just regular people with injuries that weren't fixed yet because we were in a hospital, you know. So I was just thinking, you know, they, you know, I thought people could walk around with their brain exposed for years. I mean, <laughs> until I was in at least junior high or high school, I believed that people could walk around with their brains exposed, flies landed on it, and could still live and be alive. And then I saw this, that movie Hannibal where he was eating outside of someone's, someone's brain while they were still alive, and then that confirmed it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I guess that is possible. But then I thought, started thinking about it. Well, this man was not under any anesthesia. He was walking around like he was perfectly healthy. So that, you know, that wasn't right. So I was like, okay, well, possibly I saw a ghost or a spirit or some type of residual memory that was taking place on that land. I don't know. But I saw something that was not, you know, normal. <laughs> so, yes. And then, so this hospital was once a mental hospital as well where they used to perform lobotomies. It's in here, y'all. And I'm just reading and I'm, if things are being confirmed from my childhood, why was I born in a hospital over a cemetery? Why, uh, you know, why I became a mortician? Why I could see things in the beyond? Why I could, you know, feel 
certain things why I know certain things it's just it all adds up you know so you gotta take in consideration the environment that you live in the environment you were born in and like make the connections y'all I have some other paranormal stories as well that I might tell in a different video I guess I'll do like a little mini series of videos about my paranormal experiences and you know maybe you could uh share yours below like really quick uh <laughs> but i was thinking about actually going to like pretend to look at an apartment in the jefferson davis hospital like a, a, a future resident but they're all booked people live there and they live in that haunted building and I was actually I actually started to write a short story or novel about this hospital converted into an apartment and you know a fiction story of course of the happenings that would go on and I, I started writing I got really far and then I just quit one day because it wasn't right it just didn't seem right because I didn't know the true history of the property and so now that i know i feel like i can continue on you know writing that story if i do because like i i'm the queen of starting stories and short stories and not finishing them unless they're super short <laughs> so let's just see what happens there um anyway that is the story of the Jefferson Davis Hospital in which I was born. I don't have that gift anymore of seeing the dead walk around with injuries because you know as a child we're more open and still connected to that spiritual realm and we can see more and understand more spiritually as a child because we don't have you know we haven't been tainted and we haven't been corrupted by this world yet. So. I don't I can't see that stuff anymore but as a child I did and I just wanted to share that experience with you and uh, get that out there and it was kind of strange that I picked up this book in the library and uh, the hospital that I was born in was it here many places that I've been uh, the library downtown uh, restaurants that I've eaten at are in here <laughs> but the only experience paranormal experience that I've had in any place in this book because I've been to a few was the hospital that's it other ones I didn't get anything um, but I've been to so many of these places I didn't get anything except in the hospital so I truly believe that um, when you mess with dead people and graves and just dis discard their remains and bones you're gonna get some activity so <laughs> that would be like if you're a ghost hunter or a paranormal you know scientist that would be a good place in Houston to do any sort of um, ghost hunting if you want want it a good place to start jefferson davis hospital and let me see what they give you the address let me give you the address in case you live in houston or visit houston they give you the address okay oh uh we almost moved into this apartment um the rice loft okay anyway let's go i'm trying to find it y'all Okay, here it is. Jefferson Davis Hospital. Elder Street Artist Lofts. 1101 Elder Street, Houston, Texas, 77007. And they even have the phone number. 713-223-2787. Hmm, that would make a good video to go visit there, huh? Okay, thank y'all for watching. Thumbs up and leave your paranormal experience in the comments.
and uh, let me know if you want me to do a series of these videos and share my paranormal experiences with you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.